Fellow citizens, 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 citizens. The world is very different now. Welcome back. I'm Tyler. You're watching Scarfing Scarves, and welcome to the 79th installment of last week Lolita News. At the top of the segment, the bloodbath for Little Witch begins the same evening. I'm writing the script. The hype online forecasts large groups of people ripping each other's faces off to look like some card captor soccer a sticker set. And my condolences to those we lost in the trenches. May you revive in time to fight over Lovely Poodle, a print that has so much Milky Chan the Fawn energy, right down to the little lamp. Lamps, I should point out, are made of poodle, a factor that is important because communication device shaped like doggo has entertained what few brain cells aren't actively engaged in mining for serotonin before pulling a Janet and handing me a potato. Whatever the case, the OP appears to have those Milky Planet re-release pockets, and both cuts have the same lace as Royal Poodle, an underrated print that should have received a standing ovation just for breaking up the bear cat bunny cult that followed ever since AP took Milky Chan out to the woodshed and came back with some suspicious looking venison. New pastel pink Bambi print when AP, I suppose we'll have to slake our thirst with this doggone knockoff. Did I mention it comes in gray? That's about as vibrant as our chances of seeing Milky Chan this side of the second coming. Meanwhile, we're looking at the umpteenth re-release of Melody Toys, Tits in Space Edition, because re-releasing the normal waist cut would kill them, but at least we get a reimagining of the bunny toy necklace, this time with a bear attached, meaning I'm satisfied so long as there's enough stock to go around. Around, which there won't be, because Angelic Pretty wants us all dead. Speaking of Memento Morbid, our favorite sweets brand is also stuffing vermin into small jars now. The print is called Toys Museum, and I can hear lovely lore screaming all the way from Canada, given their decision to feature a fat little squirrel right in the center of the bodice. This of course means I need to own it or leave Lolita to become a nun, because nothing would mean more to me in this moment than wearing this walking billboard of bad choices complete with a scale, almost as if they were weighing whether or not they could get away with putting this entirely unrelated tool of measurement on a print apparently meant for the imprisonment of tree rats, teddy bears, and the Mirror of Era said, as viewed by someone whose greatest desire is some bug-eyed cat as drawn by an intoxicated trash panda. And even with all of that said, I still want this fracking dress with the intensity of a thousand burning suns. And I will fight you in an Arby's parking lot to get it. While we're on the subject of of things that are brown and terrible, AP's upcoming release of Chocolate Doll caters to two groups. One, people who like gingham and therefore cannot be trusted. And two, people who saw Gustav fall in a river in Willy Wonka and said, how can we get this drowning child but on a dress? Seriously though, that checker ring Titty Island is doing that poor frock no favors. Yolks in general are best left on the inside of a chicken's tuchus. Case in point, AP's Noble Collection that looks one part Jalisco dress, one part vampire vampire repellent and or Catholic attractant, though this is cut for the wrong age group if you're hoping to gather a small flock of priests. Pro tip, you can't watch my subscriber count go down in real time anymore, but you can guesstimate the fallout based on how many hate crimes I commit against the faithful in the next 40 seconds. You can thank the fleeting cancellation of James Charles for Social Blade going dull, YouTube no longer releases live subscriber counts to anyone but the person who owns the channel, and none of you give a flying walnut about any of this, but I found it was a great opportunity to explain a joke, which we all know absolutely makes them funnier. Meanwhile, How How Panda is the reason and the Oreo bears refuse to fuck, this glorified rattle should not be going for car seat prices. And to finally jump off this train of AP fall and winter releases to look at things that other people care about, I'd like to announce that Kumya's Twinkle Cosmetics was slept on, those little Usakumya slippers deserve better, and while I think the removable corset on the second JSK looks like baby's response to Eternal Carnival under the influence of a potent cocktail of hydrocodone and hubris, I absolutely appreciate the utility of having the choice between Empire Waste and cheap-ass poppers response to the waste censure. 
Also, the jewelry for this release was absolutely phenomenal. AP eats your heart out. You finally have a selection half as varied, and all you can produce is the shadow of a feline, some moon clips, and a couple of Etsy called. They want their Sailor Moon copyright violations back. Also, can we talk about how these same sellers would slip a disc if you so much as looked at their original art? But fuck if they won't pump out 50 Sailor Mars enamel pins like they own the franchise. Unrelated, but also important, Alice and the Pirates' Quiet Toys Room was amazing Amazing, and I would have bought it if I hadn't already dedicated my life to making everything I own some shade of pastel depravity. Which leads us to the perfect time to segue to outstanding news that most of you already know. Mary Magdalene is back from the dead, meaning classic Lolitas are crying in the streets, and everyone else is giving the golf clap equivalent of enthusiastic approval. So on the one hand, hooray for a pillar of Lolita fashion returning to the fold, and on the other, wake me up when there's bunnies on it, I hope the classic Lolitas are dropping bank because I'm not about to spend $600 on a coat that looks like a stolen Milanu stock photo. Some of you are saying it's not MM's fault that Milanu stole their photos back in the day. Others understand that constant replicas killed Chess Chocolate for a reason, and most aren't going to want to spend debonair bank to look like Dream of Lolita went down on light in the box and a wish listing was born nine months later. In summary, good for Mary Magdalene, and in the interest of getting to the end of this thing before half of you start collecting social security, that about wraps up the week. No one has managed to poke the hornet's nest that is this community with a stick. And without further ado, we return to that website everyone loves to hate in a bit called What to Fa Lace Market. The premise is simple. I shop here. Threw you all off, didn't I? Find something that confuses, disturbs, or makes me question the whole of humanity, and you benefit from the dark marks it leaves on my soul. So without further ado, let's get this going. What to fa is that? I do believe we're looking at a pillowcase teddy tent, and for the low, low price of $40, you too can look like the surgical aftermath of spare fabric and the bow equivalent of the You Tried Star. I would say I was surprised to learn this was the work of Metamorphos, but we both know you can clock this as crown label in the dark, and even the seller seems to agree, describing it as like pink in the same way this is like a dress if you were raised by the Dada movement and have the taste of a colorblind ferret. Looking up the stock photo did not improve the situation the chest stripes are entirely crooked, meaning it's reminiscent of a barber pole, but no one thought to shave off that chest bow. And the black colorway looks like a mutated lampshade, deeply involved in the process of gaining sentience, so it can either do your taxes or commit a series of murders so well executed, homicide detectives would have been entirely fucked had it not been for the bloody footprints shaped exactly like a bow the size of a subnational administrative division. That's territories like Puerto Rico or Washington, D.C., for those who had tennis coaches for geography teachers, both of which should be given statehood, especially given that D.C. has more people in it than all of Wyoming. And I can already hear some of you saying that D.C. is in some way technically different from a subnational administrative division, but I would say you're focusing on the wrong thing, given that it has no Senate seats and sends a, quote, non-voting at large congressional delegate to the House of Representatives. Which is kind of like competing in a debate, but before you go on stage, they shove a sock in your mouth and beat you with Teddy Kennedy's baseball bat. Meaning that some 700,000 people have absolutely no say in the House or Senate, don't even get me started on the 3 million in Puerto Rico, and saying it's beyond time that they were both made states is like saying that you should turn off your oven before the house burns down, only it already did, and you're standing on the ashes of whatever subpar souffle you convinced yourself would be worth an arson investigation. Also, this dress is fucking ugly. Make Puerto Rico and DC states, pack the court, Fuck McConnell with a cactus, and that's all the time we have for tonight. This has been Tyler, you've been watching Scarfing Scarves, and before you trundle into rush hour traffic to scream at your fellow man, I'd like to thank my patrons for making this possible. You can join them at patreon.com slash lastweeklolitanews if you prefer to suffer. And I don't recommend you do that should you not want to encourage the darker tendencies of a supremely damaged biped to replica debates away from committing vehicular murder. Unpack all of that how you will. Will. Thanks again, guys, and I'll catch you next time. Speaking of Memento Morbid, our favorite sweets brand is also stuffing vermin into small jars now. The print is... That was really fucking creepy.